Welcome back to Jail Time Pod. It's your host, Rip. We got a video today from Riva TV. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that chow. It's Jail Time. I can't do though, and I, I can talk to you and chat. You know, like remember how you say, if you if you live publicly, if you live it publicly, you break up publicly. Yeah, it's so it's okay. See, I can I can deal with that though. I had the tip for tat, and mm. and I'm gonna. That's a that's a good give it to you. So inter interesting. Did you, did you do it because strictly you just wanted to get back at him, or mm. you really just really humble baddies is the name of their thing? How are you humble if you're calling yourself a baddie? what's up guys it's your girl riva and i am back again with another video so recently um former nfl star chad ochocinco um and his girlfriend we know her um as a realtor on the tv show selling tampa um she recently announced that the two of them were no longer together in a social media post so the post reads chad and i are no longer together please stop tagging us he is a free man ladies and um chad ochocinco also screenshotted that post that she um put on social media and also put it on his instagram story now um apparently there was a woman in the comment section who after she saw um um Sherelle Rosado which is Chad Ochocinco's um now ex fiance's post on social media she commented and she said thanks sis I will kindly slide in his dms to which Sherelle um responded and said lol hope you don't catch anything sis now this is my problem okay this is my problem first things first before we get into any of the nitty-gritty my issue with this situation is you know again this is no shade to anybody but in my personal opinion i find it very corny when you break out of a really of a relationship especially so fresh and you know you were giddy you were happy when chad ochocinco you know was in a relationship with you and went on one knee and decided to propose to you everything was all glitz and glamour there was so much love um in the air during that time <laughs> What I hate to see is that, you know, again, especially so fresh after the breakup happens that people come to the Internet and try to uh, diminish, demean or disrespect their partner as if there was never any love there. Right. And this is something that we commonly see women do. Yes. It is not common for men to get on social media and berate their ex-girlfriends, ex-wives. I mean, how many times have you actually even heard me talk about my ex-wife? not often i don't care that's that's the thing about us men once we're over something we're done why do i have to talk about her the only reason i talk about her is because you know we talk about relationships and we talk about marriages and stuff i have to somewhat talk about some of those things but do i talk about her personally no i don't even know anything about her personally anymore i haven't even seen her since mom's funeral that was the last time I've ever seen the woman. And before that, it was like two, three years before I've even seen her then. And then she came to mom's funeral, which opened up another can of worms. And then now, no contact still. How it should be, guys. Why do we need to go talk about people? We're better than that. Only ignorant people talk about people. Remember, you want to talk about events you'd want to talk about future you want to talk about planning you want to talk about jobs careers not about people baby mamas just on a whim right if you see a man doing that we all know that that does not represent the majority but oftentimes way too often we commonly see women do this, right? Mm -hmm. They come on social media. They have so much stuff to say. You know, they want to talk about uh, talk about them in, in a horrible way. In this case, she's implying that he has some kind of um, infection or whatever the case is. Like, that's just very distasteful, very disrespectful. Very. And to me, it's just corny. Again, this is just my personal opinion. I just find it very corny. I agree with you, Rina. Now, um, the two of them do have a child together. I don't think it's corny. I guess the, maybe you like to use that word. I think it's more desperation and just sad. As I said before, they were engaged. And, you know, recently, 
before this whole announcement of the breakup, um, Sherelle went on her podcast and she actually spoke about the beginning of her relationship with Chad um, and that basically she cheated on her ex-husband with Chad. When wow. I was younger, I used to have the okay. mentality and... Ocho Cinco, what is up, bro? I actually somewhat look up to you. Like, I think you're a, a pretty nice athlete. You're a little over arrogant, but you had a good head on your shoulders. Why? Why? She she was married already. Why mess with the woman that is married? Why? If she cheats on her husband with you, what makes you think that she won't cheat with you? Oh my gosh. I actually, I cheated on my ex-husband with Chad. So she made sure to say that, you know, she cheated on her ex-husband with Chad, but she wouldn't even use the word or term cheated because she was mentally checked out of the relationship. I wouldn't say cheat because I mentally checked out. I understand. Um, so you were okay. almost done with that relationship. I was done. So you, but you cheated. I was mentally checked I out. Now, the reason why I thought it was um, important to bring that up in this context is because, again, that's a very recent um, podcast episode that she had in which she started to dive in. And normally, whenever you see women start to talk too much about the relationship when they never talked about it before, you know that that is, um, you know, kind of a signal that things are on the decline, right? Once they start being very free of intricate information, yep. that's when you can tell that there's there's going to be a dip in the current relationship that they're in and what I, I i have noticed that too with you know celebrities and people around yeah when everything's good you don't hear shit as soon as shit goes bad they're on podcast tours and everything i thought was very interesting was that you know she made sure to say that she checked out but also she was speaking as a place um out of a place of you know um regret that she decided to make that decision as well as she started talking about the fact that you know she's not happy that her ex-husband and her have the tumultuous relationship that they have based off of her actions if i would go back i probably wouldn't have did what i did but it happened i don't you know i can't go back and change it um, does, does that affect your relationship now with us yeah of course but it does affect my ex-husband and our relationship we do have a child together and so we are co-parenting co -parenting, it does affect a lot we don't communicate at all yeah i think it's very important that we talk about this because just that you know everybody focused um when that clip went viral on social media that Sherelle stated that she cheated on her ex-husband you know a lot of people focus on that aspect of the conversation but to listen further in the conversation and hear again the regret of what she did to her ex-husband and how she's you know not happy of the state of their relationship um you know currently I think it's very important to again let's we already seen it with the Tia situation. We see it with the Erica Mena situation. Like we have to be honest with women that a lot of these women that step out thinking that the grass is going to be greener on the other side, right? Thinking that they are making the best decision, thinking that, oh, you know, I'm going to leave my ex and I'm going to get with somebody who's better, richer, more famous, has more resources, and that they're ultimately going to be happier. I think, again, this is something that a lot of women need to understand, when you take that leap out there, tell them. It, and again, this is my opinion. You have to be ready to be by yourself. Yep. What I mean by that is you have to know that if you are stepping out of your relationship with this person who is committed to you, who's loving you, who is protecting you, who's leading you, who's guiding you, and you are deciding that I am now going to lead, guide, cover, and protect myself. When I, when you step out of shore to unsure, that has to be a risk that you are willing to take. A lot of women think halfway through, right? <laughs> they think of the glitz and the glamour and how amazing everything could be, but they never think of the reality of the situation of what if that situation doesn't work out? What if, you know, I go into that situation and what I'm dealing with in this situation, what if it gets a hundred times worse with this person that I don't know? Us as women, we'll make decisions because we're emotional. I think oh, these shit. are conversations that are very vital because it, it need, like women need to have the ability to think of these things. And a lot of women don't even think of these things 
because they have their homegirls and their friends and their ear talking about, yeah, girl, you know, do you. Okay, well, you know, he finer than him anyway. Well, girl, he got more money than him anyway, so you might as well go over there. Yep. Women need that reality check like, girl, you tripping. Ugh. Girl, okay. But that's the shitty thing, Reva, that most girls, most women are not going to say that to their friends. They're not. Why? Because some of these girls... Just like that message, oh, you won't mind if I slide into his DMs then. That's your friends. That's a chunk of your friends. They want to see you fail because they want that man. That man is a top tier man and they don't like that you have him. They don't think you deserve him. And technically, you probably don't deserve him. That's why these women are ready and waiting. Yeah. I understand that this might not have been the best situation, but y'all need to work through it. This is your husband. Y'all need to figure things out. She made mention that, you know, the reason why she, quote unquote, mentally checked out of her relationship and got into a relationship with Chai was because she was in a tit for tat mentality. So that would allude to the fact that maybe her ex-husband um, possibly stepped out of the relationship and cheated on her. I've been in a, a place where I've been cheated on. What I find interesting about that situation is, you know, women are always upset when a man cheats, but when they cheat, they always have um, certain things that they can blame it on. Well, they have so reasons. it doesn't make them look like the bad guy. And before I continue, I don't want this conversation to get any, to get twisted, right? Before the whole podcast interview and even um, before her coming on social media and talking about, oh, you know, make sure you don't catch nothing, sis. I thought that they were a beautiful couple, okay? Mm. I thought they were nice together. I loved the the, the comedic um, space between the two of them when they would joke on social media. And it seemed like a very promising relationship, right? And it still could be. Maybe they can fix it. Maybe they can mend things. I'm not sure. But you see, when she... Um, posted what she posted on social media about the ex-husband. I actually, I cheated on my ex-husband with Chad. Regardless, what I noticed is that when women step out or cheat in relationships, they always have like a clutch, right? And so she's like, well, I wouldn't say I cheated because I mentally, mentally checked out of the relationship. And I gotta be honest, there is truth to the fact that, you know, people can be in relationships and long-standing relationships and they are no longer emotionally con or even physically, right, intimate or connected with one another. And so the relationship is basically over and the two people are just maintaining and living in the same household, whether it's for the sake of the kids or, uh, you know, trying to save face with, within your community, whatever the, sp the space is. So I'm not going to act like I don't understand what she says or where she's coming from when she states that. However, there is a big drastic difference when a woman steps out in a relationship and when a man does. I had the tip for tat and, mm. and I'm gonna, that's a, that's a good, give that's it to you. So inter interesting, did, you, did you do it because strictly you just wanted to get back at him or mm -hmm. you really just- I have to be honest. And I know a lot of people are gonna be upset about it. Oh, that's hypocritical River. How could you say that? You know, men shouldn't step out in relationships either. And you know, you're- I 100% agree with all of this right here. I, I talk with my, my girlfriend about this. It's like, I'm not saying that men can cheat or should cheat or have the ability to cheat. No, it's just when, when men cheat and when women cheat, it is a quite a different thing. Women cheat to do better and to move on. Men cheat. I can cheat with a hole in the wall. I, we, I talked about this last couple videos ago that us men can literally just shove our dick in the wall as long as we don't even know what the other's inside and it feels good and it gets us off we're probably gonna not question it and just move on women can't do that men it's like a handshake for us i hate to say it that is a very good analogy for it though but like for men yeah it's literally just right move on that's it you're, you're, it's a double standard, but in reality, there is a double standard. Go agreed. Right? A woman cannot do what a man does and still be a lady. True. And we all know that. But also, because of our emotional capacity, mm -hmm. right? When a woman steps out on uh, into a different relationship, and, and again, she moves on and is emotionally connected to another person, and then le that leads into intimacy, the problem that comes up is that the woman who is in this relationship and is doing these acts 
is going to have now trust issues within her relationship. Think about that. She is now having um, these thoughts or feelings within her relationship in regards to her man because of the actions that she did. Mm. Now she's in shaky waters. Now it's like kind of like an insecure, an insecure place. And again, I find it ironic that she decided to, you know, put him on blast on social media and say, make sure you don't catch anything, sis. But you just did a podcast blatantly saying that you cheated on your spouse. Yep. And so if you would have gotten negative backlash and people saying, oh, you know, Chad needs to be careful and make sure he don't catch nothing, would that be fair? <laughs> would that be a fair and equal assessment since that was your assessment about Chad now based off of whatever happened between the two of you? True. A lot of women will, you know, have these spaces within their relationship and they will just put all the blame on the other person. Oh, well, you know, well, he did it first. And so I did my get back and, you know, that's what I did. And it, it wasn't really cheating. Like there's kind of excuses for the actions instead of just 100% standing 10 toes down. Now, again, when I say that women will have this, um, you know, underlying sense of, a distrust or dishonesty within their relationship based on their own actions. I saw recently um, that Chad, he was on a night talk with um, Shannon Sharp, and he was actually talking about an incident where he was at a restaurant talking to the waitress and, and went off just based off of him talking to the waitress. I mean, right? Yes. And I'm eating my food. Got my sunglasses sitting on my head. Right. The sunglasses fall by accident, and I put them back up real fast. And the waitress was in front of me. Real, real. Who think that? somebody sitting at? She say. Man, who in the f is that sitting in front of you? I know you're not playing with me. Now, again, this underlying sense of insecurity or instability within the relationship is all because of you leading into the relationship with your own thoughts or your own feelings. Or basically, I know how he is because I know how he moved with me. True. Right? Or because I, I know that. what I did. And so now since I know what I did, there's a sense of insecurity. Yeah, it's it's that sense of what woman can do that can just pull you away from me exactly how I pulled you away, that kind of thing. I get it, I get it. Within that space. Iron and again, I have to keep saying ironically because, you know, it's like the pop calling. You know, every time I look at this, I can't even... Freaking Chad's fucking ring, man. Like, this ring right here is just... Whoa. But... This is part of why it's hard for men like this to ever really get genuine connection, right? They're just so high status. They're so well known. They have so much money. Even if you try to hide all of this money, they know he has it. Kettle Black. You're mad at him for doing something that you did. And I think, and this might sound crazy, I know a lot of women might not agree with me, but I think that if you are a woman who you stepped out of your um, relationship before because you were not emotionally connected to that person or whatever the case was, and you were going tit for tat, I think evolution and growth doesn't always mean that you 100% just run for the hills. I think sometimes evolution and growth is, I remember, you know, and this is me speaking from her point of view, it should be, you remember when you were in that position. And so now you need to get a deeper understanding from his true emotions or feelings so that you can move forward in whatever direction. I'm not saying, you know, oh, I'm, so, I'm forcing you to stay and y'all should be there and work it out. I'm not saying that, but I think that in true evolution and, and true growth, it would take you to try to figure out what was this mental state that caused this action to happen, Agreed. if it happened. Because if you accused him of something before, this could be something that's also accusatory and it never really happened. Mm. Unless it did. I don't know. We're going to find out. But I think that women should take more time to communicate. I, I said it before in a previous video, I'm going to say it again. You know, it is so vital to understand your counterpart, understand your man, understand his mindset. If you know that this person is, again, leading you, loving you, guiding you, protecting you, covering you, and something kind of off comes up, you need to have a conversation. Have the conversation. See where his mind is. See what's going on. Dig deeper. And also check yourself. Are you tripping? 
Have you dropped the ball? Have you been moving in a different way? Are you treating him disrespectfully? Are you starting to get a little rough? What's going on? Shout outs to you, River. Not every time do you need to just um, run for the hills because a lot of times women run. This is the other side of, I'm going to rail against red pill a little bit right here. Same. Sometimes we see some of these red flags and, you know, us red pillars, red pill creators and stuff like that tell you to run for the hills as soon as you see some of these flags. Some of these flags can be fixed. Some of these flags, if you approached it correctly, can actually be a, a thing that helps your relationship. But we are men and women are so quick to discount women or discount men over small little things or hear little things that we might miss out on something. This is, I'm, I'm not saying that women that show you red flags, give them a chance here. I'm not trying to say that. I'm saying some red flags, are they that big of a red flag? You know, yes, they may be feel this way, but if you explain things to them, would they understand? And some people do. That's the part where I'm like, at least explain yourself, set your boundaries. So they can understand, oh, my bad. I didn't realize I fucked up. That's the part where we're not catching each other anymore. Out of relationships and they're not realizing they're in a space of um, pivotal growth for themselves. Instead of you just, you know, flying off the handle and cussing and screaming, now you just grab your stuff and leave. But you're still not solving the problem or Correct. getting to the root of the problem. 100% agree with you, Riva. Which is very necessary. Especially if you want to be, if you say you want to be a wife, okay, and you say you want to be married, you need to figure out effective communication and how to get to the root of problems and how not to be reactive. Very vital. Yeah, that is the shitty part about the dating. How even I tell you guys to discount women, certain women when they sew certain things too, but there are nuances. Our how red pill almost always talks is general generalization right majority of the time almost majority of the time what we say are probably going to be correct or more likely to be correct for that position in time but there's nuances right there's little nuances here and there that you might have to think for yourself that is this a nuance can this be fixed if it is, am I willing to fix it? Do, do I like this person enough? Are this person receptive enough to want to fix things? Try to work on things a little bit more. Not saying that ignore if she's cheating on you, she's cheating on you. But say she's a little bit disrespectful. And not that she's disrespectful, disrespectful. That she just doesn't fully understand what respect is yet. You might be able to teach her. You might be able to help her out in understanding that she might be receptive. If she is, that probably is going to be a good woman. But if she's slightly disrespectful and you discount it immediately, tell the truth, most of those women are always going to stay that way. They're never going to be, they're, never, they're hardly ever going to learn. So there's, there is aspects to, and we want better. We have to create better women too, right? Please like, comment, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. I'll catch you guys next time.